Well, containing Toulson, containing Hawes, that's a headache for Pepperdine. It is, and the reason why is you've got Yoli Child, such a low post presence, and then they have a multitude of shooters around him. Yeah, there's Lorenzo Romar. It's his fifth season as Pepperdine head coach, but it's only his second on his second tour. He was there early in his career before going to St. Louis and having a real nice run at Washington. All right, we know this is going to be up and down. All right, here we go, man. How do you see Temple as a one team? country in a shade over 80 points per game, but Pepperdine has a great point guard in Colby Ross, who's great at picking and choosing his spots of when to push it and when to slow it. And don't underestimate Kessler and Cameron Edwards, the brother pair for the Waves. They're going to run at Childs, and they're going to run to the bucket. And then we'll run. It's Pepperdine on the board. It's imperative, and even Lorenzo Walmart said this to get off to a good start for the Waves. A great first possession. Isolate on the elbow where Lee struggles to really move laterally. Good dunk down. That's Lee. Lee, the sophomore out of Meridian, Idaho. Idaho. And it's two apiece. That basket was due to the fact that Pepperdine had to stay connected to the shooters in the corner. You give up. Number zero, seven, That's something he's become much better at as he's become a acclimated to the college game, averaging nearly eight a game in WCC plays. Often known as a big time scorer in high school, but great defender for a freshman. Lee, that's for Marcelo, it's picked off there. Chavez got a hand on it. This is Ross in transition. Both these bigs, both the Edwards brothers, can get to the rim. And they're both Big guys, 6'8 is Kessler, 6'6 six, six is Cameron. She saw another chance there for Colby Lee to guard in an isolation set situation, and Cameron Edwards puts the ball on the deck and attacks. BYU's the best three-point shooting team in the country, but they missed their first. Hoffman with the rebound. How does BYU defend Ross today? Well, you've got to always locate him in transition. in transition, control him, not let him get into the paint. And that last possession, a great example of why he's so good. He's averaging over 20 a game. He's also leading the conference in assists at over seven a game. A very smart player. Toulson backing in against Altman. Into the lane, missed the shot. And Brigham Young on the road at number 17, a week after that huge win at home against Gonzaga. Corner three, Cameron Edwards with the miss. will shoot the two and hit it. shoots it in. Now a shade over 50% of the year. Not a ton of attempts. He makes about one a game. Just enough to really keep you honest. He's now 20 of 39. Okay, he does shoot the two. Keys to the game, Dan Dicka. Pepperdine, you've got to take away BYU's three-pointers. Attempted, and we talked about them because they're the best three-point shooting team in the country. And BYU, establish Childs inside. If you can do that early, what that does is that gives more space and freedom to all those three-point shooters. Ross's pass picked off by Childs, leads the break. This is Hawes, mid-range jumper, missed it. Childs with the front. Relentless on the glass is a, a good descriptor of Childs on the offensive end. That time getting one in transition. Pepperdine scores 76 a game. A left hand that time for Cameron Edwards. And Bergen Young, who shot 53% against the Great second behind in Provo. Great if you were a Bergen Young Cougar. with the steal. Toulson fires it with a three. That's one of the ways BYU is so 
tough. They play with so much freedom under Mark Pope. A lot of places that would be deemed a bad shot, not at BYU. If you can knock it down, you are free to early in the shot clock in transition. Ross curls around a pit. Tucker out for it is Edwards. And he misses Tulsa and has the rebound. And here comes BYU. Connor Harding in the game for the Cougars. Childs against Kessler Edwards. Body against body. Straight to that strength. Kessler Edwards with the block. They've decided to play Yoli Childs solo on the low block. So far, it's paid off. Kessler Edwards coming up with a big block. We've got a good one here in Malibu. Ended 39 road wins in conference. Done. Oh. 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 The Childs couldn't pull this. And of course, BYU sits in second right now. They can't catch Gonzaga, but they win this game. They secure the number two seed in the West Coast Conference tournament. And that's huge because the one and two seeds in the West Coast Conference are the backdoor pass. Late in that tournament, that's a huge advantage. You get that double bind, a lot of it was to protect Celius' is I think it was to protect your net ranking for the higher teams in the conference, particularly the Gonzaga and the years. But this will really potentially help a team like BYU as well, because if you even win a team that's a lower quadrant three or a quadrant four, potentially uh, as a win, that doesn't do much for your own net rankings. Of course, it was such a wild scene after the Gonzaga win. You can read it that And he wasn't finished. After the game, he showed up at Cubby's in Provo and promised to buy all the students dinner. <laughs> and he absolutely did. I love to see that. The excitement of a college head coach and then the buy-in of the students to take him up on his word. I would have been there with him. For the free meal, right? I've <laughs> been to that restaurant, it is good. Now, to one free meal. One point game, Cameron Edwards misses a three. Tulsa with the rebound. Jake Tulsa has been terrific for BYU. This is Harding, feeds Child, going right back to that low block against Kessler Edwards. He blocked his left shot. Charles, elbow in. before we went to the last break. This time, hold his ground, hold his ground. Yoli Childs usually able to play bully ball with anybody in the WCC. That extra little push was a no-no in the official's eyes. Altman stopping. Childs, another rebound. You can bring it up the floor if you want to. He's fouled by Cameron Edwards. You don't want to use your fouls on Yoli Childs. 45 feet from the basket. That's you do not. Senior from Rancho Cucamonga. He should know better by now. I'm sure as soon as he stuck his hand in there, he knew better. Broke his nose earlier in the season, still playing with the mask. He's the older of the Edwards brothers. He was honored here on senior day. Catches the pocket pass and the finish over the top. Ross trying to split the double team was banged hard. Corner pick and rolls are so hard to guard, and then you add on the fact that Haas is a great decision maker. There's no help side. Child to the finish. Ross in corner pick and roll. 
pick and roll tougher than one near the top of the lane. Well, typically, especially because of how BYU has shooters, the rotation has to be preset, and it's a longer rotation if you're late. That time, nobody was there. Chavez. And I could use some of his sharp shooting today. And the lead is three right now for number 17, BYU. Look at the rebounding margin. I don't know if the headline can last that long at that margin. It's now Chavez with the rebound. It's a small Pepperdine backcourt. Edmund's one of the bigs. things about Hawes is he's such a crafty player so if you're Cameron Edwards in that situation you've got to understand if it's somewhat questionable Hawes might go ahead and try and take a charge. Cameron Edwards you saw him sit down he's got two personal fouls. Seconds misses and the rebound to Kessler Edwards. Gavin Baxter is in for BYU. Off to a 12-9 start. Really good offense. This one has yet to get going. setting of new guys, he is going to be a difference maker. And has he been right? Almost 16 a game on the top three point shooters in the country. He had five threes and had 17 in the win over Gonzaga. And the last time he faced Pepperdine, he went for 25 and seven threes. Ross gets to the line a lot. He is an 86% free throw shooter. Makes one of two. And this is a 15, 15 ball game. If you're just joining us, Logan Young is number 17 in the country. And playing for the number two seed in the West Coast Conference tournaments. Kobe Lee is a low down low. And he gets that one. He's a low down low. 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 He's a low down low
defense in the post, regardless of who has the ball. That time Lee takes his time, gets to his sweet spot, little jump hook over the left shoulder. Well, Pia Obioha is in right now. The Pepperdine Ross starting, stopping, but not finishing. And Brandon Young's defense on him has been superb so far. It's a big lineup in right now for the Cougars. Celius is in, Lee is in. We have Connor Harding in there as well. Lee at 6'9", 240. Bodies in, steps through. Yeah. And that doesn't go. Kessler Edwards, the rebound. And a lot of times if you elect to play one-on-one -on -one in the post, an offensive team will take that challenge and they start to play out of sorts. They typically don't go to Lee on the low block back to that possession like they just did. Ross with a three, the rebound by Keith Smith. And it's a hell of a place to be with you. Now, let me see this here. He's done this all year. That's a light line. He's averaging over 20 a game. But in this one, he's off to an 0 for 3 start. He has a couple turnovers, but he does have four assists. It's only a matter of time before he gets going. And the reason why is. He is a very confident young player. Zero, 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 zero. The ball's going to be in his hands a lot. It's just going to take one or two mistakes in coverage for BYU to give him a little bit of an opening, and he'll take advantage of it. But BYU has been tremendous getting back in transition, cutting off his driving lanes, and then being aware when Ross is in pick and roll situations, not allowing him to turn the corner. Marcelo, Childs, and Toulson back in for BYU. Childs going right to work, spins to the bucket and missed it. And Kessler Edwards with a rebound. He's got five already. This is Kessler. Forced the pass. Touched by BYU. Stays with Pepperdine. Now, if you're a BYU fan, you're number 17 in the country. But you're probably taking a look at the top 25 today. It's littered with teams who have been upset. Baylor's gone down. Florida State's gone down. Villanova's gone down. Texas Tech has gone down. Mr. Edwards could get that to go down. And Childs has the rebound. Hobbs steps in. And wins out. 4.6 rebounds now for Kessler Edwards. Polk to Smith, where will Pepperdine get its points? The he gives you on the offensive end is a bonus. Typically, they don't throw the ball below block. Put the river on that possession. Childs. Childs. Childs has got nine. Oz has got three assists. a little bit of his athleticism with some knee injuries, but looking to provide a spark down the stretch of the season for Lorenzo Romar. Fox forced it. Got it back for Tulsi. Shot clock was reset at 20. Pick and roll, pick and pop with Chavez. Feeds the post lead. Kessler Edwards. Two points for the team. Kessler Edwards. And it's 
It's all tied at 19. Seven and a half left first half. He continues to play well. Sophomore now with 10 points. He is going to be a force to be reckoned with over the next couple of years in the WCC. And they are feeding Charles in the low blocks against Kessler. For the senior, who is the sixth all-time leading scorer, and he's got 11 in this one. It's a nice little matchup head-to-head. -head. The sophomore Kessler Edwards and the senior Yoli Childs. Kessler Edwards. Three-pointer. He can play inside, showing you the outside ability as well. He's active on the glass, leads the league in shot blocks. Get a look at Yoli Childs, one-on-one -on -one in the low block against Kessler Edwards. Again, Pepperdine deciding to stay at home on shooters and live and die with the results, but Kessler Edwards shooting it with a lot of confidence this afternoon. Childs has 11 and five rebounds, and so he showed you Kessler Edwards, 13 and six. Is checking back in the game for Pepperdine. 22 21, the waves on top. Now, look, Pepperdine has some nice wins this year, had some really close losses to good teams. They lost to Gonzaga by five, and Gonzaga was number one, to number 14, Arizona by two, Providence by three, USC on the road by seven, Tulsin, Bunks, no whistle, and the rebound. Cedric Altman. Tulsi thought he was hitting. I think he's right. Chavez. Got his miss. We're seeing some growth in Kessler Edwards. Kyle's handoff. Pies. Curls around. If the previous possession wasn't called as a foul, I don't understand why this one would be, but nonetheless, TJ Hall is so glad he's searching out the contact, get the ball up high off the glass, get it to drop, chance of the three-point play. Skyler Chavez with that foul. It's his second personal. Remember, Cameron Edwards for Pepperdine's been on the bench with two. And what's notable about this score is 24 apiece. Pepperdine has one point on their leading score, Colby Ross. And that was a free throw. And it's Harding who draws the assignment, although multiple guys with switches. Yards Charles against Ross. Kessler Edwards. They've got some thoughts and plans to build a new arena. Chavez straight on there and missed. Had it lined up. Pies. Chavez again, man. He catches that deep. That's Chavez. And that's two points. When he catches it that deep, it's a problem. But give him a ton of credit because not a lot of bigs understand real life. Run right to the rim and create an early deep seal. Coming from and going, and then 
Rhythm Drive is moving. Score by number 44, Hunter Hardy, and that'll be the second. Hunter Hardy with the foul on the reach. But that's what makes, excuse me, Rich, why you're such a difficult scout. Do you stay at home and play one-on-one -on, -one on the interior with Childs, or do you open up the potential for BYU shooters to get on track, which they've had games this year where they've made 17 and 18 threes. They are, if not the, one of the very best shooting teams in the country. 50% from the field, 42% from distance. <laughs> with the two fouls, a baseline commando raid on the bucket. It's back to a three-point game. Marcelo in, Wilson sat down on the whistle. That's where you want to catch the ball. And it's Kessler Edwards, still can't stop him. Is Yoli Childs. And Kessler Edwards, quite honestly, is doing a nice job. That time pushed the catch out. But Yoli Childs is that good on the low block. You can't just give him all that time in the world back you down to a sweet spot. Cameron Edwards steps through. His brother's chip is wedged in the rim. And the ball's going to be BYU. This is fun. This is an entertaining game. Cameron Edwards, the senior, shot fake. I'm going to attack and do this. Pepperdine playing well. for his 18 and four of his buckets have been threes and you can see those two squaring off on this end of the floor. Pause, Marcelo falls out of bounds and up and over goes Cedric Altman and let's hope he's okay. He didn't save it obviously his foot was on the line and then up and over, and everyone's all right. There's 22 on the shot clock. 17 BYU down a point. As we're under the three minute mark here in the first half. Final day in the West Coast Conference. Oh, this is Jumper. And Ross is there to rescue the rebound for Pepperdine, who right now is holding their own on the boards. Rebounds just about even. Neither of these teams are great rebounding on the season. They give up. Rebounds to their opponents and they get them themselves. But neither of these teams are really built to be great rebounding teams. BYU wants to get back in defensive transition instead of attacking the offensive glass. And if you look at the makeup of Pepperdine's ball club outside of the two Edwards brothers. They are, there are no great rebounders. Childs and Barcelo check out the BYU. Ross. Got it. Nice job. Barcelius defensively. And here comes BYU. Pause. Barcelius is open to shoot the three. And he missed the three. Ross has another rebound. BYU would like to do a little more of this. Get out in transition off a missed bucket. Cedric Altman, though, is the best on-ball defender that Pepperdine has, and his assignment so far has been Jake Toulson as Oz misses that drive. Ross with a man on his hip. Got him up, hands it off. a prime example of that being the case. BYU trying to answer, Harding. Pick and roll, and Sidious the two of the Again, because of BYU shooters, you stay connected on the weak side. 
You like offense? We got offense. Pepperdine is explosive. BYU, a great shooting team. And the Waves have been executing offensively. Well, Ross creates so much attention from the defense, finds Edwards, who then passes that favor on to Chavez. But this is where BYU is so tough. Because they've got shooters on the weak side, you set a pick and roll. If help is nowhere to be found, the roller a lot of times will get a wide open opportunity just like Celia's had just now at the rim. Celia's certainly an emotional leader for this BYU team. He was terrific in big minutes against Gonzaga. Ross misses the three. Edwards, Kessler Edwards tips it back out and then a fresh clock. He's starting at 20. BYU now is showing a little bit of a zone. Don't do this a ton, but many times out of a timeout, they'll just change up the look. He's averaging just three points a game. Charles has been deadly from here. Odioha on his back. Closer, closer, left hand. Missed it. Great job by Odioha. If sitting on that left shoulder, Childs. Doesn't really want to turn back to the right shoulder, use the left hand hook. He will on occasion, but he's much more effective over that left shoulder. Can't play for the last shot, but certainly they can play for a late shot clock opportunity. Colby Ross, with Harding trailing him, down to four. Why not get it to this guy, Kessler Edwards? Short, pause with it. Got five seconds to work. TJ Hobbs, Stevenson doubles. On a day where a lot of top 25 teams have gone down, number 17 BYU at the half on the road in the West Coast Conference. That's all right. You wanted to hit it early. By three. After the break, Red Stover. AT&T at the half. You're watching college basketball on CBS Sports Network. The 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Has gotten single coverage on the low block from Pepperdine. He's taking advantage with that 17 points. But again, Pepperdine's game plan is stay at home on three-point shooters. It's going to be interesting to see because of Child's 17 points in that first half. Up. I think it'll be interesting to see which guard gets off first because Jake Toulson and TJ Haas really weren't factors. This guy was and he scores. That's Colby Ross. He was one of six in the first half with six assists. TJ Haas was one of eight, but he had seven assists. They'll pick and roll. Childs had to wait for the pick. Lee scoops up an offensive rebound. Buffett, Toulson, three. That's what you don't want for Pepperdine. You give up an offensive rebound, they kick it out to a shooter at the three-point line. If that gets them going from three, you can look back at that play as being the reason. That's it. Bad pass, certainly. Mark Pope wants his team to get up the floor a little faster off the turnover. Toulson met by Sedgwick. Altman is going to watch Jonathan D. He pops it up. Ross in transition. Chavez is going to move back to Ross. Misses a three, has the rebound, puts it back up, missed that. Foul. And now, that's Cameron Edwards, third person. That's extremely frustrating if you're Cameron Edwards. You work hard to get an extra opportunity with the offensive rebound, and then you rush the finish with the left. Expecting contact, didn't get it. 
And then just a little slap on the arm on Toulson as they battled for the rebound. Haas certainly has created for others with his seven assists. Lee Child spins into pressure his foul there by Kessler Edwards on the reach. That's his first person. You mentioned Haas a second ago, seven assists, one of eight from the field. He's the least of Mark Tope's concerns. He seems to always have the ball, want the ball, and then make big plays down the stretch in close games. This is a short one. He hasn't missed many of those. Ross is so strong with the ball, he's fouled by Haas. Colby Ross is one of the stronger guards you'll find. That's one of the things that Mark Pope and Lorenzo Romar talked about. It's one of his strengths. He's just so hard to pry the ball from him. Strong guard, but he also searches out contact. He does a really nice job of getting himself to the free throw line. Understanding when their team is in the bonus and he can get free free throws out of it. He needs to search out defenders right now because he's thrown two passes that have ended up in BYU hands. Against Barcelo. Kessler's kick. Oh, Pepperdine with their biggest lead of the ball game. Toulson, Altman has been in his jersey all afternoon. Marcelo, the Arizona transfer. Oz likes that top of the key jumper. Poor just pass. That's the eighth assist from TJ Hawks. When you come off that pick and roll, you create a problem for the defender of the screener, which is what Haas did. And then you just make the right read. And Lee is able to catch and finish almost in one motion. Chavez catch and shoot and short. Maybe not a good shot there by Chavez. Hasn't gotten it going, which he has the capability of doing. Put the ball to Kessler Edwards' hands. Play through him and Colby Ross. Childs hit a three. This is one here. That ball about hit the Raptors here in Firestone. Drop that high. The bubble is still a good impression. Ross, that's good by Ross. Ross got it back. Fires it inside to Altman. Double clutch. Foul on Colby Lee. Cedric Altman. At the line for the Waves. He gets back and gets Cedric himself Altman. to the line. Big time scorer in high school was Cedric Altman. Came in kind of with that mind frame of I'm going to be a big scorer. Really quickly. And the Waves are going to realize as a freshman most times at the college level, you've got to defend. And he's become a really good defender as a freshman. And coincidentally, his offense has started to come around with WCC plays. is a true freshman, but that's the truth with Cedric Altman. Zellius and his stash are back in for BYU. Childs in deep, that's trouble. That's hand and Childs. 19, and the only Childs. because 75% from the looks of it are BYU fans in this facility. Yeah, BYU fans travel well, as you mentioned, but 
you know, they also have an advantage. This is spring break for Pepperdine students, so there's very few students encouraging their waves. Boy, Altman has really done something on Toulson. He followed them well before the shot. Jake Toulson, three of six. With nine points, Toulson does have seven rebounds. He's look. There's so many weapons for BYU. Childs is a, a headache. Toulson is dynamite. Haas can hurt you. Celius driving. Childs the rebound. <laughs> Process of threes and paint touches for layers. Yes, the Edwards couldn't miss in the first half. That's the score here in the second half. TJ Haas is approaching 10 assists in this game. Celius 
Beats Childs. And it's Obi Oha. Childs got it up and missed it. Got it back and didn't miss the ball. For Pepperdine, you have to come up with those rebounds. Edwards not able to do it. And Childs gets his easiest two of the night. This is where at times I think Ross dribbles too much. And he's got the freedom to do it. But he, with that ball, trusts the teammates on the second side to make the play. A three in rhythm for the Oha back out to Chavez. Let's see if the Waves can get this guy going again. Hold off the screen. Kessler Edwards double teams. Steps through. Kicks over the Oha. Step up and make plays. Both Edwards brothers have done that this afternoon. 
Colby Ross is trying to shadow TJ Hawes, which is never easy. Picks up the foul. Four point game. Neither of those two guards have had a very good shooting game or shooting afternoon. They both have a lot of assists. This is that moment where you talked about Tourson against a smaller guard. This is the hook. Open the rebound. Ross in transition. Digits. And this indeed was a danger zone for Pepperdine. 
Johnson that may have been a little bit of a questionable look, but comes right back and knocks it down. Coach Rose, Romar told us today, shooter, shoot around, shooter, shoot. And he views as Chavez as their big time shooter. So this is Prince, and he gets a free throw. Four fouls on Cameron Edwards. This is where BYU's offense just kind of wears you out as a defensive opponent. Dribble handoff, dribble handoff. You think you understand the pattern. You get lulled to sleep like that time with Celius, and then you open up the ability to turn the corner. Contest Barcelo at the rim. Could have been a foul, but a no call, but never give up on a play. Zach Celius doesn't give up on it. He's rewarded with the two points on the putback. Number 17, BYU, starting to look like it here. 71 58. Onto the floor. You come onto the floor like that for a potential altercation, that is an immediate ejection. It looked like he was coming off the bench to help his teammate up, but I don't think he could do that either. Right? Exactly right, yes. And that's probably why Coach Pope was so upset about the decision. That wasn't for an altercation. That was 
you are straight to the semifinals. Because you don't have to play before your first game. And that first game is a semifinal game in the West Coast Conference. Gonzaga will be the one seed, BYU will be the two. One Defending him a lot of credit there. Cedric Dalton has played terrific defense for the BYU guards. How about more lovely challenge for him? In case you haven't had enough. Line switch for BYU. The number 14 in the Easter game for Childs. He does such a nice job of making himself available in Duncan's. And then he attacks the defender many times. And the difference between him and a lot of guys is he can finish through that contact. All right, the reserves are off the bench, and that guy in particular is big man on campus. That's Robbie Ski, the senior. He is the senior class president who begged to walk on and was told no way and kept at it and kept at it and finally made the team as a walk-on. Get him a shot. And he's being defended by another walk-on. He's a senior, so it wasn't like, you know, he walked on and got on as a freshman. It wasn't until his senior year. Yes, and his teammates love him. You can see that. The crowd really pulling for him as well. And that is his first point of the season. He's in the smoke book, though. That should help if he's after a, a, a second term as the uh, senior class president <laughs> here at Pepperdine. Well, number 17 BYU was pushed in this one for sure. But the Cougars are hot, one of the hottest teams in the country. Mark Pope and number 17 BYU have now won nine straight.